Good morning and welcome to Divine Way TV where we talk all things real estate, money, motivation, and mindset. And today I got a special guest for you. I know you're looking for my brother. He's busy paying bills. So shout out to Greg Divine. He's holding it down right now. Well, I'm here with my man, Saya. And you're thinking, who is Saya? Saya is, man, I met Saya in 2010. He was working on a property across the street from the property I was working on. And uh, this guy, you know, is a, is a multimillionaire. And my job at the Divine Way, I want to bring you millionaires. I want to bring millionaires to your cell phones and to your living room so that you can see you know, what comes out of Oakland that, you know, there's folks that look like us that, that are on this level. So let me bring in Saya, man. I call him, I call him the man, the king. Uh, I got a nickname for him. He's the million dollar milkman, Saya. What's up? Know. What's up, everybody? How are you guys doing today? Yeah. Oh, man, it's a pleasure Welcome. to have you on the Divine Way. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. I, I here. Know, I know um, you saw me with my chain on and yeah, and, and you and we were talking about you know, that's a heavy chain. Yeah, that's heavy. a nice it chain. Is, it is heavy. And, and I was trying to explain to to these uh, to our audience here that uh, this chain is forty dollars at Home Depot. OK, it's a tow chain. Yeah. But when I grab a key to one of our apartment buildings and I clip it on, all of a sudden this chain is worth four million dollars. Yes, sir. So. You you collect this kind of jewelry yourself, don't uh, you? Yes, yes. Man. Yes, I have a chain as well. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so let, so cheers to that, man. <laughs> cheers. First of all, thanks for coming on the show. We're going to hop right in, and hopefully the audience stays tuned with us all the way through so they can see how, you know, a kid out of Oakland, right? Yes, definitely. Who's, right, who's been working, you know, the nine-to-five grind, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at delivering, driving trucks. You're going to tell them how you got into to uh, your truck driving license and how you you started that career and how you became a millionaire through real estate and then through real estate also started investing in stock so um tune in I'm, i mean i'm just i'm off i'm off this juice too uh so so uh tune, i hope you tune in this show all the way through the end because si is going to drop some gems for you so si let's pop off of, all the way from the beginning man let's let people know where are you from? All right, so from the beginning, uh, I'm from the Bay Area. I was raised, uh, I was raised East Palo Alto, Oakland. And uh, so I was be between those two. My mom lived out there. My dad lived out here. And uh, let's see, when I was a young adult, uh, you know, when I was 17, 18, 19, uh, I was just regular, regular hustling day to day, uh, making like, money day to day. Like felonies and misdemeanors? Like felonies, misdemeanors. <laughs> Send a little bit of weed or something like that, <laughs> and uh, so so a lot of a lot of people they they understand how that is coming up when uh, you don't really have any other stuff that you know what to do, and so anyway, uh, probably when I was about twenty five, twenty six, uh, I uh, came to the realization that uh, I had to go legit because day to day hustling uh, was not going to work long term. Uh, I mean, it's in a, a lifestyle like that. You're not, you're not building credit. You're mm -hmm. not, you're not, uh, it's just day to day and whatever you make for the day, that's it. And, uh, so, uh, what I realized what I could do, uh, really fast. And I picked, uh, this, this skill to get because you can, um, you can obtain the skill within a month. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I went to truck driving school. And uh, that was just a three-week class. And uh, when, when you graduate, take the driving test, uh, you're going to get a commercial Class A driver license. That took you one month? One, one month. Wow. That's it. That's it. One month. And then so uh, from that, I realized uh, that I had a relatively good job and uh, I was able to save money. And uh, I wanted to buy my own house. That's right. That's right. And so, you know, a lot of, a lot of us want to know where that seed is planted, because when you come out of an environment where you see a lot of poverty, death, and just like financial challenges, yes, you know, a rough school system, yes, you know, where, who plants that seed in your head to be like, okay, when I get my first check, 
And my second check, I'm gonna save all this up so I can buy a property. Where did that come from? Where that came from was, uh, it wasn't as much as somebody planted a seed, mm -hmm. but uh, what I experienced growing up, my mother used to always rent and, and my father rented also. And so I was raised in uh, apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I kept seeing uh, with them is that the rent kept, kept on going up, up, up every year. And uh, we had to move several times. And uh, so I kind of seen that renting doesn't really work out too well long term. Mm -hmm. and, and especially if uh, something happens within your life where you can't work, uh, you're not going to have any secure place to live. So um, I did not want to get in a, a, a situation where I have somebody raising, raising my rent every year. And uh, that's what uh, motivated me to buy. Wow, yeah. man, that's a great story. So I'm sure you also saw the amount of stress that your parents were under. Definitely. When a landlord comes and, and increases the rent and you're already, you're already check to check. Definitely. That puts a lot of stress. So yeah, and it trickles down to the children. So you were yeah, like, hell does, no, yeah. I'm not gonna let this happen to me. That's where the motivation came from. Yes. Yep. And what did you do with that motivation? So you saved up. You said how much? How many months? Of so I saved up about nine thousand dollars, and uh, with my truck drive, driving job, that took me about six months. Okay, so six months, you have this money in your bank account. And then you're like, man, I, I want to buy a house. Yes. And this is 2009, 2010. Yes. Where the real estate market is at, at, a, at a low. Right? Yes. It basically yeah. crashed. It the, crashed. The whole yeah. economy crashed. Um, so during the great, they call it the great recession. Yeah. You have this money in the bank and you say, okay, I want to buy a house. What was your next move? Did you go to a, a broker? Did you go to a bank, credit union? So my first move was I went to the bank and I got approved uh, for a real estate loan. And, uh, and then my second step after that was I had got a realtor. Okay. My, yeah. Okay. So did they approve you on the first shot or did you have to like get some more paperwork together, file your taxes? They, they approved me on the first shot. Uh, what they needed from me, all they needed was uh, my... Uh, W-2, mm -hmm. and they needed a couple of checks uh, from my job, my uh, pay stubs, and then they needed uh, me to have proof of my money for the uh, for the down pay payment. Okay, yeah. so now you've got your stuff together. Now you got a realtor, and you're shopping for your first property. Are you thinking this is going to be an investment, or are you going to move into it? What were you thinking? I was just looking for something to move into. Okay. That's so, it. so the market, so you end up finding a house and how much was that house? Uh, it was only $50,000. It was foreclosed. It was okay. So this is like the bank took the property back from the previous owner. Yes. And now the bank hired a realtor to sell this home. Here you come into the picture with your realtor and you're like, I want that one. Yes. And that house was $50,000. 50 grand. $50,000. So what were your, this is huge for our audience because mm -hmm. You know, they, they hear this too. What were the people in your lives at the time you're thinking about executing this plan? What were they in your ear saying? So they were telling me I was crazy. <laughs> they were saying that I had never I had never owned a a property before and it's gonna take all this kind of upkeep and uh that it's gonna be a big hit headache. They were saying that the real estate market right now is trash and I'm gonna end up losing somehow and that's what they said okay were they right oh no they were dead wrong yeah, they were <laughs> you dead want to wrong. shout out to any of those folks out there they know who to they everybody are. that was trying to discourage me <laughs> look, look at me look now at yeah now. look at me now i got i got a chain like this right here i got the same chain man that's what's up so you bought your first uh property fifty thousand dollars yes uh i've got a laptop in front of me that we already punched in the numbers okay. to see what kind of return you were getting. So at $50,000, you put down around $18,000. Yes. Your down payment. And that came from, I, I saved up 9,000 and my income tax return 
that year was about nine thousand. So I so I put down eighteen thousand. You put your so did you have any more money in savings? Like did you have money under the couch or you put everything down on this house? I put everything down. Okay, so yeah. that's good for people to know because they so many people think that they need like cushion or it, they would they wouldn't have done the what they wouldn't have made that decision because I don't want to lose all my savings on this investment. Yes. But you put all your chips in. Yes. And you had a mortgage payment with taxes, uh, principal, interest, insurance of around $240. Yes, sir. So that $240 mortgage payment, today, you, you don't live in that property anymore. Right. And you're getting how much in rent? Also, oh, I rented that property out uh, and I did it with Section 8. And so a Section 8 is paying right now 1900 a month for that property. So when you when we ran the numbers on the laptop, essentially your $18,000 down payment on a $50,000 house is bringing you over 100%, I think it was around 112. 112 yeah, 112 or yeah. 102% return on your cash. Yes. So, I mean, that's mind blowing for, for a lot of investors. Investors right now, I mean, if you put your money in a savings account at the bank, what is the bank gonna pay you? Uh, nothing, what that's like 0.0, .0 Point zero four percent or something. Right. Like, yeah. Right. Not, so to our audience who is trying to to find the way to build wealth and become a millionaire, it it's these kind of returns that change your lifestyle. Oh yeah, yeah. So so now you you're driving a truck during the day, right? Still, yes. And yes. you're and what are you delivering? Uh, right now, bread actually. Oh yeah. really? It was oh. previously milk. Yeah. Okay. But right man. now, bread. Yeah. So I, I called you the million dollar milkman, but yeah. you you just the you bread it. I'm the bread now. You, yeah, you yeah. Bread it up. <laughs> bread it up. <laughs> man, so yeah. you're delivering bread and, exactly. and and you got your own bread as yeah, a result both, of investing yeah. in real estate. Yes. Yes. Man, so now you've got your first property, and you heard all the people say, "Don't do it. Don't do it. You're crazy." Yeah. You went and bought another one. Yeah. So. My second property I actually bought from Eric, and that was seventy third oh, right there. Yeah, that was the second right. one. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah, you know, let me just tap tap in on this one because I I got my shirt on. It says, you know, Divine Way Oakland, right? And so I mean, you you literally did it the Divine Way, right? You yeah. bought your second property from, from the Divine Way. Yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah. so that and I got the money from that from the Motwell. Working for them. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's 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 hop into to that piece right after we wrap up the story around the house. So okay. my brother and I bought a house on seventy third. Yes. And is that Bancroft or Foothill? Uh Bancroft, yeah. Okay. I think we paid eighty and we put a uh, new kitchen, bathroom, windows, um, new roof on it, and and then you were in the market, you were like, Hey Eric, I'm living on you were on church at the time. Yes. Man, that's a that's a cool house. It's, it'd be good for my family where I'm at right now. And what did you end up buying it for? I paid, you guys sold it to me for uh, $185,000. $185,000, yeah. man. So yeah. 185000 you move into that place. Yes. And you live there for a couple years, right? A couple years, yeah. What did you years. end up selling it for? I sold it for uh, 400000 Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Man, so you got all this, you got this money now. And what do you do with that money? I, you uh, didn't, you didn't go buy it. Nah, no? <laughs> I didn't buy Jordans. I didn't buy clothes, jewelry, uh, didn't buy a car. Um, I did, uh, I did help out some of my family with the money and then I reinvested the rest of the money in real estate. That's cool. That's cool. That that's, this is a, a really crucial lesson for our audience because, you know, when you, when you start at the bottom, right. And you start coming into money your family's watching you make these moves, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And they, they say, do they start saying, man, Sai is rich? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what, what are your family asking of you while you're trying to build yourself up? What do they want from you? So you, you have family members that might need money buying a car or uh, they might need money to get a first and last month to deposit on a, a apartment and different stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, so I helped out with that. And that worked out for you that, that worked out. Yeah. Okay. Did they, yeah. did, was it a loan or was it a gift? 
Uh, it was a gift. Yeah. Okay. It was a gift. Because you already know the money's not coming back. It's right? not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, that's what that's what we do. You know, when we yeah. when we're when we have success, we try to share it with as many people as we can. Yes, but sir. be smart about it at the same time. Yes. So, after you helped your family and you sold the house on seventy third, you took. I mean, how much? That sounds like a pretty hefty profit you had there. Yeah, I did, I forgot if that one if I got hit with capital gains. Uh, well, you lived in it so for it only a couple of years. Though. Yeah, but yeah. but shout out to IRS if you read the code. <laughs> They're, that's the original gangster, isn't it? Original gangsters, yeah. Yeah, they come for their money, but they, we have they gonna to, get theirs. So we have to be smart about it. And if you live in a home for, I believe five years, right? I think it's two, two something out of the last five years. I gotta, we gotta check okay. on that tax okay. code. But your your capital gain that you had made, so you bought the home for like one hundred and eighty, mm -hmm. and you end up selling for selling for near four hundred. Yeah. So yeah. now you've got this hefty profit. And you don't want to pay tax on that money. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you ended up trading that house into a you rolled it into a new investment. Yes. Where yes. did you go next? I believe uh, with that one. So yeah. So when I sold seventy third, is the is I put money down on the house that where I actually live in right now. Is actually where that, okay. where that money went. Yeah. And so how much was the house that you, you purchased, that you're living in now? What did you have to... So the property that I live in right now, I paid 600000 for it. And I believe I took about 60000 out of the profit that I made from selling the previous home. And that got me in where I'm at now. Wow. So, so that house that you bought and when did you call i remember you called me on this property you're like hey eric there's this house in the laurel area yeah the laurel i'm trying to move get out of here out of this neighborhood into this neighborhood and yeah and it, it was a good move it was it worked out yeah it was a good move yeah because, very good move for the kids and everything yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. what is this uh this six hundred thousand dollar house worth today oh it's worth a million dollars right now yeah Thanks. it's a million dollars uh right when, when i bought it it was already worth uh it was worth about eight hundred thousand, and I got it for six, and uh, it's worth a million dollars. Here's another right lesson now. in that story because, y you know, you ended up buying that home off of the MLS, right? It was already on the market, wasn't it? Not, or not yet. Not exactly. Nah, it was a uh, it was a private sale actually, oh, so it was kind okay. of the same situation when I bought. It was off market sale. Yeah, yeah. And how did you like? A lot of people are like, man, how do they even find these deals, man? How did you find that deal? Well, that's where we got to scroll back to knocking on doors. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, I ended up finding that deal was uh, when I was working for Eric, knocking on doors, I uh, would come into contact with, uh, with like all kinds of realtors. And so uh, it was a realtor that I met uh, from working with him um, that had called me about that property. And uh, that's kind of how real estate work sometimes is his word of mouth. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just from relationships that you've made through this bi business. For sure, man. Yeah. So it's not necessarily what you know, more who you know. It's, it's who you know, yeah. 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 So you ended up through, through our network and the audience is thinking, well, you, know, you work for Eric? How, how do you, how'd you work for Eric or, or yes. the Divine Brothers? Well, there's something called wholesaling, right? Yes. And as wholesalers, you can, we, we use the, the internet or we use the different web, some different websites, right? That, Foreclosure Radar. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Foreclosure shout Radar. Out. <laughs> so we use this software that basically finds people based on the zip code who are behind on their mortgages. Yes. That's called pre-foreclosure, right? They're yes. about to be foreclosed on. We get a list of these folks and we go knock on their doors. And not everybody has has the guts to do that. Yeah, you gotta uh, you you can't be shy. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, right. You can't right. be shy <laughs> doing that. No, man. So I mean, you end up knocking on doors, and as a result of working together, you had a partner uh, that you had with you at the time. Uh, that, it was a lady at the time that I was uh, uh, showing about 
real estate too about what I learned from him. So yes. you're teaching her so that she can then have that skill and go out and do the same thing, right? Yes, sir. Because it's about breaking bread to together. Mm -hmm. So that deal on that wholesale opportunity, we ended up flipping that for a profit. And what we do with a handshake is we just say off the top, 33%, we're going to split it 33, 33, 33 with my brother, you and I. Yes. And as a result of that, you ended up getting a total check for how much? So with that, um, I got a check of 15,000. Um, and then the partner I was working with, she got 15,000 also. So it was a total of 30,000 split. That's cool. So you get that money and, and we, we did, we did that off a handshake, right? Off of a handshake. Yeah. 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 It was no paperwork involved. It was a handshake. Uh, they trusted me, I trusted them, and that, yep. So you now you got this $15,000 check, you've got your first property on, on uh, you still have that one on church. Yeah. 73rd is, I think that was out. I still had a 73rd, still had yeah, 73rd. Still had 73rd. Yeah. So what do you do? Now, you, now you're into quarter million, half a million dollars in cash and, that you're coming into. Yes. How do you not go crazy and go buy, go to the jewelry store, and and go pull up to the roll, uh, the Rolls Royce dealership. Well, when you start moving up, uh, and especially when you're coming from the bottom, when you start moving up, you don't want to blow the success. Um, I mean, you've seen you've seen ball players when they retire, they go broke, and uh, that's something that we don't want to do. And so, uh, what I did, I just stayed stayed focused on real estate. Yeah. That's cool. And if you ever needed anything or, you know, had a question, we, we were talking quite a bit during that time. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a uh yeah, it's uh it's just regular friends, you mm -hmm. know, it isn't it isn't nothing yeah. So you regular. I think I think I remember on the house that you living in now. Yes. Um, we spoke about that and you ended up like you know, I think you were like, Hey, do you I think you asked me if I wanted to buy it first. Did I? Yeah, you might have been like, hey, man, do you want this one? I, was like, I might oh, have, man. and I bought it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you closed man. on that, man. On that, yeah. I'm, I'm so proud of you. You got yeah. that house. You yeah. you got your daughters, Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. And, and you moved in. And that neighborhood has been much different than uh, Eastmont. Yeah. You know, so what I did, so. I moved because, because I have two kids. And so, uh, you know, we all want something better for the kids. So uh, I basically moved from the hood to... A more, a more, uh, what, what would you call uh, it? Like area? Blue upscale, car, upscale, like a, yeah, blue car, a, yeah, middle class, middle class middle area, class, yeah. yeah, yeah, middle class area. That's huge, but for a lot of people, middle class in California, that's a million dollar home. It's you a can, million dollar home, though, yeah. You yeah, can go, so you can go di almost anywhere else in the United States, and and that's a that's like a, a mansion, you know. For uh, oh yeah, oh, it's a mansion price, yeah, yeah, yeah like the, yeah. the price that I mean yeah. that's you could live really good in another state, but California, else, yeah. California's been good to you with your investments, and so you start scaling, right? You're you're growing your real estate portfolio, and then you decide like l diversify. Let's diversify. And what yes. did you go into? Oh, stock market. Stock yeah. market. So f for someone who knows nothing about the stock market. Give them a little knowledge. Give them a little game. Okay, so the stock market, when I jumped in it, I was brand new to it. And what um, what made me get in stocks was I saw our utility company out here mm -hmm. uh, go bankrupt. And so their stock uh, plunged from, uh, it was about $70 per share, and it plunged all the way down to, uh, I believe it was, it was like 5 bucks per share. And... Uh, I knew that the company was going to end up making it out of bankruptcy. So I ended up buying those stocks very cheap. Um, I did not catch it when it was five bucks, but I caught it when it was, uh, it was about $7, I'd say. And, uh, and so uh, that's what actually had me jump in stocks when I saw that opportunity. Um, yeah. 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 So how much, I mean, if you don't mind sharing with the audience, because, you know, some people don't understand what it takes to invest in the stock market. You can do it for very little or you can do it for a whole lot. How much did you secure the bag with and, and, and throw into the stock market? So what I did, and I would not recommend this, uh, I put $50,000 all just on 
that one on stock. That one stock. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I would not recommend that because uh, you never want to put your whole thing in just one stock. And so uh, what I did from that, um, that utility company actually, uh, it had kept on going up and down, up and down, up and down. And so what I did was I sold some of it when it went up and I had bought uh, uh, another stock, which is, uh, it was a, it was a, uh, it was a Chinese electric vehicle company. And uh, that stock actually did very, very well uh, back. This is in, uh, let's see, what year was this? This was uh, right before the pandemic. So this mm -hmm. is, uh, what was that, 2019? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And so um, the, the second stock did very, very well. But um, what I would recommend for somebody that's going to enter the stock market, you want to make sure that you – diversify your stocks because if you put if you put it if uh, if you put all your money just in one stock if uh that stock if it tanks you're gonna uh you're gonna lose mm. uh, but if you uh, let's say if you just start out with like let's say ten thousand dollars you would want to split that three ways so you want to buy three stocks uh you, you put three thousand here 3,000 there and then 4,000 somewhere else. And that way, in case one of them goes down, the other two will pro probably go up. Okay, that's yeah. good advice. So if you had to compare your two um, investments, real estate versus stock, um, what has one done for the other or vice versa? What, how would you compare those two investments? For so you? real estate, Compared to the stock market, uh, real estate money is guaranteed, and you uh, you you pretty much know what your what you what you invest, what your return is going to be, and so real estate's more, uh, I would say, more straightforward. With the stock market, um, it's a lot more risk, and so you just want to be very very careful with that stock market. You can get a big return, but you can also lose big. That's yeah. good. That's good right there. And, you know, when you when you said real estate is almost like uh, uh, it's recession proof, it's like stable. Yes. But someone's like, well, what if some what if something happens and your house burns down? Oh, you have insurance. Yeah. So, you yeah, you don't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no worries. So it's been a good run for you. So now, you know, you've got some real estate, you're dabbling in the stock. Yes. What do you see is the, I think you mentioned just a few minutes ago off camera that, that you had almost made an offer on another house for around $450,000, $400,000. Yes, yes. So you're still looking to invest in real I'm estate? I'm still, yeah, I'm gonna get back in real estate with my next investment, yes. yes. All right, and what is the, uh, what has real estate done? Okay, you get a, you get a check every month, right? Yes working uh deli it's delivery right so oh, yes, driving yeah. the truck yeah what can, has yeah. real estate allowed you to do when you look at your tax return oh 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 so real estate uh it has actually helped my taxes uh because when you when you own property you can uh, you can write off all kinds of uh stuff mm -hmm. and so uh the 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 real estate has actually helped my taxes uh where i get a bigger tax return every year now. okay yeah so back in the day when you in 2009 2010 you had told our audience and myself that you had like a nine thousand dollar tax return yes in 09 and 10 so now as a result of your investments what are you getting back now in terms of is it still nine thousand no nah, so what i get back now it's about uh, between twelve thousand to fifteen thousand every year, which is really good. Yeah, for, for sure. For me, yeah, yeah you're good. keeping a lot more of your money because yes. that's that's essentially one of the the best uh, wealth building tools. Is what people don't realize is when they're going to work for the whole year, and thirty thirty five percent of their money is going to taxes. Essentially, you're working for free. Yes for that part of the year, right? Yeah. So yeah. you want to find ways to recoup that money and keep more of your earned income, which real estate allows you to do, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Man, so what's the future for Saya, man? Everybody's want to know, man. 
you know, this new millionaire, you know. I you mean, have... I've been doing the blind man shuffle for this whole time. So, <laughs> you know, the future, wherever it's going to take me, where it's going to take me, I just keep on going forward. There you go. There you go. And yeah, yeah, keep on making that money. Yeah. That's it, it. You know, people think it's all wins as investors. Yeah. We have L's too, right? Oh, we take L's. Yeah, we do take L's. Yeah. But see, they don't, they don't, a lot of folks out there, when they hit that first L, they give up. You can't give up, yeah, yeah. So, you got to see the potential going forward still. So yeah. let's let's call those losses lessons, and let's let the audience know, you know, one or two lessons that you learned along your journey from from those L's. <laughs> you want me to you want me to talk about the L's? Yeah, yeah. Like like let them know that it doesn't need to be you know whatever you're comfortable with sharing. I'm but, comfortable with anything. But let them know like what did what did you learn from the L's? You know, what was it and what did you learn? Well, I, I, I haven't taken that many L's. So um, in the real estate, I haven't, take, I haven't taken that many L's. Um, How about an eviction? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Like so dealing we talk with about a that. challenging yeah, eviction, tenant, yeah. right? So I had a tenant that I acquired from him. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, that house was cheap, man. Yeah. You got a deal on the house. And but so, it came with a tenant, right? Yeah, so I tried, since I know how it is uh, struggling, I tried being nice. And what I learned in the real estate game, you, you, you can't really be nice. It's just, uh, it's just all about business. And so since I was a rookie back then, uh, I was trying to be nice to her. And um, I, uh, I basically did not um, give, her, give her a set date to move out mm -hmm. and this is a house that i bought from him that my family was actually going to move into yeah and so the uh which you have a right to own or which move. i have a right you yeah have a right yeah to move in, but she wasn't cooperating she wasn't cooperating yeah so she uh she had never even looked for somewhere to to move to and then furthermore um she was trying to uh, she was trying to change her locks and she was uh she was doing all kind of stuff, not not trying to move out, mm -hmm. and so I had to get a lawyer and uh, basically evict her, and uh, and and she fought me on it, and uh, I think I ended up paying uh, three thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then uh, she finally had to move out. Um, so so yeah, you might deal with that, but uh, I mean it was uh, it was three thousand dollars, and I made it back, so yeah. That's good. So you yeah. turn that that loss into a lesson. The lesson, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Not to be nice. It's just it's it's a business. So what I should have did was I should have hired an attorney from the the the, the beginning and just got her out. Yeah. That's what I should have did. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So uh, shout out. I, I still remember her name. Yeah. We we, Lachelle, We're talking yeah. about you right shout now. Shout out. Shout out. We yeah. hope you're doing well, Lachelle. Yeah. You know, but you can't live here. You know, you can't live here. Don't yeah. mess with my man's money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that was it. So that was a good lesson for for the audience to hear. Any other let, like let's take a lesson in stock. I think you shared that about not putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you could lose. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, uh. The stock market. I've took. I've took more L's than the real estate. Um. So yeah, the the stock market, uh, the biggest L that I took was chasing the stock, and so you don't ever want to chase like uh, when when you hear about GameStop how it just went up real real high, um, and then you hear rumors about something else, and uh, that that thing can actually tank on you, and so when you start chasing all these different stocks, you're gonna lose, um, and so what what the best method is to just put your money in a stock that you know is a uh is a growth stock and then that one's gonna gonna steadily move up slowly but when you try to chase those like quick licks you're gonna lose mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so what are your peers uh it, at work are is anybody doing moving the way you move in terms of no, nobody nobody no. at work a lot of my peers are jealous of me and they're they're wondering how was i able to become so successful yeah really so yeah. you could feel you could feel the hate 
Uh, the not I wouldn't say hate, but I would say envy. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Man, yes. so I mean that's why people are dying over these chains every day. But nobody's gonna nobody's gonna try to take this chain. Nah, they're gonna think he's a maintenance man <laughs> <laughs> with those keys. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where the value's at. That's where the money's at. Yeah. That's where the money's at. Yeah. So yeah, you would you would tell any any of our audience out there to become a, a key collector. You got to get those keys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're not talking about the other keys. We're talking about <laughs> these keys. <laughs> the other yeah. keys will just get you in trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, have you thought about going um, like back to the neighborhood, moving back to East Palo Alto where you're, where you started, or are you just going all forward from here? Yeah, not at all. I don't ever go backwards. Uh, I never go backwards. So, I mean, in a few years, you might, I might be somewhere in a whole nother state, Florida, somewhere, somewhere else, but I just plan on forward. Uh -huh. That's it. Okay. And so, what's the long term play? Ultimately, you're doing this for retirement, Retire, for yeah. building a legacy for your daughters, yeah, and, and making sure they have a life that is, uh, better than the life that you and I came from, right? Yes, sir. So long-term play is to retire early and uh, to be able to have something for my kids so that they don't they don't have to hustle as hard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so uh, retirement is in your future. Yes. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. I think a lot of people can learn from your story. Yes, because sir. So many of us out there think that you need to earn a million dollars a year to become no. a millionaire. Yes. No. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can start out from from the bottom. And like what I tell people is just uh, if you have never been to college, just pick a skill. My skill was trucking. But I mean, you could be a you could be a truck driver, you could be a electrician, you could be a construction worker, you could be you could work at Kaiser um, and just save up those checks. And instead of buying a car or jewelry, buy pr property. Yep, yep, yep. Buy property, and so property has changed your life, has changed my life, and that's why we're able to sit on this blue couch today and just. Uh, you know, share our story with the audience and share your story. Yes, sir. So, yes, man, sir. I appreciate you coming on the Divine Way TV where we talk all things real estate, money, motivation, and mindset. And, uh, man, I appreciate you. Yeah, show them that waterfront view. Oh, man, we're we, going we to flip the camera. <laughs> yeah, we sit on the waterfront right here. <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah. but, it, you know, it started with, it started with 73rd. 73rd, yeah. Man, yeah. and 73rd. Uh, I think it was eighty or eighty-two thousand dollars. When yeah. I sold that to you, yeah, um, and you paid one hundred and eighty. Eighty-five, yeah. Okay, so I took, I think I took that profit and I put it down on a house in Alameda that was that I was in contract for for seven hundred thousand. Yeah. So that yeah. seven hundred thousand dollar house, you see how we we talk about breaking bread? Like this is how yeah. you you elevated with that yeah. move, and I went elevated Elevate, my own yeah. way. Yeah. So I took that um, profit and put it down, combine it with some other change and put it down on a $700,000 house. Five years later, that house went from 700,000 to 1.350, sold that house and then put it down on the house that we're sitting in right now, which yeah. was 1.740, I think 45. And that one, this 1 1.745 house is now two and a half million. So to our audience and to your point, we both started with investments less than $100,000. Yeah, yeah. And so we're just balling different now. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Man, so you know what, let's talk about the traps and, uh, and then we'll close out the, okay. the show. The, the traps, man, I, and I got one from an OG. I gotta give a shout out to Gregory P. Jones, okay? He's an architect, and he gave me this game. He said, the downfall of too many men is the upkeep of too many women. Was he lying? Nah, he's not lying about that. Yeah, so we're I talking about women. that. Yeah, like, so. As you have success, you know, they see that. Yeah, so women, you know, they they attract to a man that is confident and that has money 
basically like, you know, it's a comedian. He said, uh, you know, that the real print that they're checking for is this print. You know, they're not checking for <laughs> for the other print. It's this print. And so when I say that print, it's about your pockets. Mm -hmm. And so if if your pockets are flat, you know, that's a whole different thing. But like when you actually fill those pu pockets up, it's a whole different game. Uh, and these women, um, you know, you, you got to pick and choose what you want to deal with because uh, you have a lot of men that end up like it's a uh, it's a ball player right now. I forgot who, but uh, it was a lady that they actually targeted him and uh, he, mm. he messed around, got her pregnant. And now she's getting two hundred fifty thousand a month. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking him. about. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so you want to be careful with that, man. Uh, you know what I mean? You want to keep your uh, circle small. And I know as men, you know, we like to, you know, dibble and dabble. Uh, but uh, you kind of want to keep that circle tight. And uh, don't don't let don't let everybody know all your business. And, uh, you know, keep it like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that's worked out for you. Yeah, that's worked out for me. OK, yeah. so we yeah. talked about the females and we're and we're we're keeping it positive on the show. We're not yeah. bashing. We're just telling you our life experiences. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, for my girl right now, I'm talking about my past. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not talking about the present. So that's my disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so what look, we're talking about traps. Well, yeah. what else, um, you know, it could be it could be family traps. It could be like the get rich quick trap that yeah. you know starts get looking good it could be the circle of our friends influencing us but what give us one more trap that that you saw out there in your journey uh one more trap i saw yeah like you experienced was it like you know people like lawsuits legal um you know is it hey what's up it's the fam it's good we're, we're almost done baby so anything else like that you saw out there that you wish you would have been aware of that uh, caught you off guard, like in in your journey. Oh, uh, like what? Uh, like it, like anything, like anything that kind of caught you off guard. It could be like the learning curve that you experienced on your eviction. You were like, "Wait, hold up! I need an attorney." Man, I didn't know. Yes. Yeah, so or, the only thing that I really learned is uh, when regarding business, uh, it's is uh, it's just all bit business. So I just learned that you uh, can't be can't be nice in this game you just got to just be not not to be mean mm -hmm. but you uh you want to be honest and uh you just want to keep it business because you could be friends but the but the actual business is actually separate from that and yeah. uh that's about it hey that's yeah. good advice man yeah. i mean any any my brother's not here today but do you have any questions for the divine brothers anything that you know that we could help you in any other way? Oh, uh, man, my only question is just, uh, what's the next move? That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're yeah. working on right now. Yes, um, sir. With the Divine Way, you know, when, when we started out in 20, 2009, 2010, you know, the Divine Way didn't exist. But over time, it's it, you've seen what it's done for my brother and I. Yeah. And so we kind of coined the phrase the Divine Way, and you've definitely done it the Divine Way. Yes, sir. So, man, we're proud of you. Yes, sir. You know, keep going, keep growing. And let's keep showing the, the youth that there's another way to, to ball out. Yes, sir. You know? Yeah, yeah. this is proof right here. You can start at the bottom. You can move up. Man. Yeah. So thanks again, Sire, for coming on the show where we talk all things real estate, money, motivation, and mindset. And you definitely have everything it takes to keep moving on up, brother. Thank all you. Right. All right. Peace.